When you're adding refrigerant to an air conditioner, does the tank have to be upside down or can you leave it upright? I have a video where I show how to add R22 to an air conditioner and in that video I left my tank upright and I got a lot of questions about that. Why didn't I flip the tank upside down and add as a liquid? So in this video I'm going to try to explain that and I'm going to try to do this in a simple way. But if you're a technician watching this and you notice that I said something incorrectly, please do point that out in the comments below. To begin with, let's start off with a little illustration. I know this may not be the most accurate illustration possible, but I think it makes a good point. Refrigerant bottles are pretty much the same as soda can bottles. They have liquid inside of them and they have vapor inside of them. So if I shake this up, you can see that there's gases in here. The vapor is up on top. Same with the refrigerant bottle. You have liquid. If it's full, if you haven't used much of it, most of it is going to be liquid and just the top of it is going to be vapor. Whereas if you used most of it and there's just a little left, a little bit is going to be liquid and the rest will be vapor. So if I flip this over, now we got the liquid on the bottom and the vapor up on top, just like the soda bottle. If I flip it over, the vapor all goes on top and the liquid is on the bottom. So if I open this bottle up while it's upside down, we're going to have liquid coming out, not the vapor, the carbonation. This refrigerant bottle acts very much the same way as that soda can bottle. So if you want to add it as a liquid, you turn this thing upside down. If you want to add as a vapor, you leave it upright. The next thing that is important to know is that air conditioners primarily use two types of refrigerants, single component and blended refrigerants. Single component refrigerants are exactly what they sound like. They're made out of one component. They're not mixed with anything. Whereas blended refrigerants are a blend of a few different kinds of refrigerants. Here's a few examples of single component refrigerants. We have R134A, R22, and R32. Those are all single component, meaning they're not mixed with anything else. A few examples of blended refrigerants would be R410A, which is a mixture of R32 and R125. And this bottle over here, this is R422D. It's a mixture of three different refrigerants. You got R134A, R125, and R600. And then I got this one, which is even more wild. This is R458A, also known as TDX20. It's a drop-in refrigerant for R22. This refrigerant consists of R32, R125, R134A, R227EA and 236FA. So why am I telling you all this? That's because single component refrigerants like this one right here, you can add as a vapor. You can leave the tank upright. Whereas blended refrigerants, you can only add as a liquid. So R22, for example, it's a single component refrigerant. You can add that as a vapor or as a liquid. Either way is fine. Whereas blended refrigerants like R410A, you can only add that one as a liquid. You cannot add it as a vapor. This is because different refrigerants vaporize at different pressures and temperatures. So when it's in a liquid form, the ratio of the mixture is perfect. But once they start to vaporize, that ratio gets messed up. So if you're going to add a blended refrigerant to an air conditioner as a vapor, the ratio is going to be all messed up. And then you're going to have either high pressures or low pressures or the unit's just not going to cool. For example, this refrigerant right here, R422D, consists of three different refrigerants, right? And here's the ratios of each one. R134A is 31.5% of the blend. R125 is 65.1%. And R600 is 3.4%. If you add this refrigerant as a liquid, that ratio stays the same. But if you're going to add it as a vapor, all these percentages are going to get messed up. So instead of 31.5, it could be 35%. The next one would be 50%. And then the R600 could jump up to 10% or something like that. When these ratios get all messed up, your cooling gets messed up as well. With these blended refrigerants, every single refrigerant in the mixture has a job to do. So if the ratio is off, the job that it's supposed to be performing is now going to be underperforming, which can really make things tricky. And if any of you are interested to look into this topic a little more, the proper term for this is called fractionation. And usually this term is actually used when refrigerant is leaking out of a system. For example, if you have TDX20, in a unit that has a leak in it and some of it leaked out, 
sometimes you can't just top the unit off. You have to pull everything back out, pull the rest of the refrigerant back out, vacuum the system, and then weigh a charge back in. Because whenever there's a leak, the different kind of refrigerants, they leak out at different rates. But that's a more complicated topic that I don't really want to get into in this video. One more thing I want to mention that I think is important is that when you're adding liquid refrigerant, you want to add it in slowly. When you're adding it as a vapor, it doesn't matter. You can open your gauge full blast and just let it go in. But when you're adding it as a liquid, you want to throttle it in, which means you would open your gauge just a little bit, just crack it open instead of completely opening it up. The reason for this is because the compressor is meant to only compress vapors, not liquids. So if you're adding just a little bit of liquid refrigerant, it has time to boil off and turn into a vapor before it gets to the compressor. But if you open your gauges full blast, then a lot of that liquid starts getting into the compressor, which can slug it and damage the compressor. And I've seen guys do this before, where they're adding liquid refrigerant and they open the gauges full blast, and you can just hear the compressor start to groan. They leave the gauges open for 10 to 15 seconds, and the compressor is just getting louder and louder, just Aah! It almost reminds me of a guy with like a red face and veins bulging out, trying to lift a lot of weight. The compressor sounds like it's about to pop a vessel. And in fact, if they get unlucky, they could actually wreck the compressor. So when you're adding liquid refrigerant, you have to remember to throttle it in, which means you're only cracking the gauges open and allowing a little bit of refrigerant to come in, only 10 to 15 PSI from the starting point. So for example, let's say you're working on an R22 system. The PSI is at 60 and you wanna add a little bit more. So when you're opening the gauges, the PSI arrow should only go up to 70, 75 PSI and no more. If you open the gauge all the way, then the PSI is easily gonna go over 100. So you would start from 60 PSI, crack the gauge open, leave it open for about 15 seconds, close it up, see where the pressures are at, crack it open again, close it, crack it open, close it, and just slowly add refrigerant like that. The reason I like to add R22 as a vapor is because there's no risk of slugging the compressor and I can open that gauge completely and just let the refrigerant flow in. But if I'm adding liquid refrigerant, I always manually throttle it in like that. Though, they do sell vaporizers. It's a little adapter that you can screw onto your hose, and as the liquid refrigerant hits that little adapter, it's like a metering device, it turns it into a vapor before it goes into the system. So if you don't want to do this process manually, like I do, you can get that vaporizer, and after you put that thing on, you can open your gauges full blast and everything will be fine. And I do want to point out that this only applies to a unit that already has refrigerant in it, and it's running while you're adding some more. If the unit does not have any refrigerant and it's off, then it doesn't matter. You can just open the gauges completely and weigh in the liquid refrigerant. So I hope I answered your question, when to leave the tank upright and when to flip it upside down. If you still have some unanswered questions, please let me know what those are in the comments below. And if you're still here and not in the comments section below, I have a question for you. What's faster, hot or cold? Well, of course it's hot because you can catch a cold.